funny that it's uh, that it's S and implied testing positive or oh. something, isn't it? <laughs> Pull your finger out of your ass. Jeez. This is my first ever football jumper. My three goat votes, I should say. My three goats. My three votes <laughs> for three Charlie. Votes. For Char oh, top of the world, <laughs> mate. What a time to be alive. I look a bit like Nick Bellick from uh, GTA 4, I feel, with this. That could, that could get dangerous. Lockdown in Melbourne is back. COVID-19 has reared its ugly head back into Melbourne and Victoria and in the AFL, um, causing a lot of headaches for the fixturing and and Melbournians as well. So it's been a tough uh, week. A lot has happened since we um, since we caught up last week on our most recent podcast, and now we're doing it via Zoom. So it's everything's changed so quickly. It absolutely has. I thought we'd seen the other end of it, to be honest. I thought that the Zooms are all behind us. We'll be face-to-face -face from now on. But, yeah, another lockdown, and footy's been moved out of Victoria once again. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's crazy how things can can happen so quickly. Um, like, yeah, I think two weeks ago, we probably forgot what COVID was, didn't we? Um, and then all of a sudden, we're back to how we were for the majority of last year, and um, teams have relocated, and there's talk about hubs again. And oh god, it's um, it's, feels like a bit of a mess. Yeah, it's a little bit. It's a bit. It just. It was so rushed. I feel. I mean, it was a last minute decision to move some of the Victorian games out of Victoria this week. So the Tigers played um, Adelaide in Sydney. So it was a last minute move, and then now no one's coming back to Melbourne. They're all staying out. So it's a bit similar to last year, but it's probably a little bit more rushed this year. I thought it just. It, it really caught everybody by surprise. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. Um, I know Carlton are hanging around Sydney for another week or two and um, most Victorian teams I, I believe are out of Victoria at the moment so um, they're all packing their bags in preparation for potential hubs and I think the AFL has come out and said it's probably not going to be as long as they were last year but I mean that's what they said initially last year didn't they they said it was going to, going to be about 30 days and ended up being close to 100 days for a lot of clubs so who knows what could happen um, it's just it's hard to predict how next week and the week after and, and a couple of months is going to look, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah, you're right. So it was supposed to be 30 days last time. And I know the Tigers were there oh, well over 100 in the end. So the same thing could happen. And let me tell you, if people keep protesting in Melbourne about wearing a mask every, you know, every time you leave the house, it's not going to get any better. These people mm -hmm. that protest and think they're, you know, solving the solution, they're not. They're, uh, they're making it harder for everybody. So, yeah, who knows how long it could be. Hopefully... The seven-day lockdown isn't too much, uh, isn't extended too much. Sorry, I know it was supposed to be only seven days, but it's looking like getting more and more now. But hopefully, uh, things are back to normal as soon as possible. Yeah, exactly right. Um, yeah, I think it's it's almost a guarantee that it's going to be longer than seven days, and um, yeah, especially with the movements of the of the clubs, the AFL tend to they tend to sort of be a, a predictor of what's going to happen, don't they? You sort of just look at what the AFL clubs are doing, and you know if, if they're already relocating, then you know that they've had some inside word from the government to to get yeah that there's going to be a, a further lockdown. So um, yeah, so it looks like it's going to go out for another couple of weeks, but oh, it's not much we can do, and um, just means we're we're back on Zoom for a, an indefinite period, isn't aren't we? That's it for the foreseeable future. We'll be uh, yeah on Zoom, and our robotic voices will be back, and it's <laughs> all uh, yeah, it's a bit of a mess. But uh, well, what does this mean for you work wise? So what's happening with you? Are you, are you chilling at home now for the for you know while lockdown still is on? Yeah, just working from home. So pretty fortunate that we're able to um yeah still be working from home at least. Um, obviously not working at work, but um, able to do a lot of stuff from home, which is good. So pretty fortunate there. But who knows though if it if it does last you know a month or, or longer, um, I'm not sure what's going to happen there. But because it's only a short term and um, yeah, working from home's the plan, which is which is good. So keeping a little bit busy with that, but obviously it's not the same. Um, what about yourself? Yeah, well, in a similar situation, I have the ability to work from home. Most of the stuff I do working in local sports media is all online. But the problem is when there's no local sport over the weekend, there's not much to cover. So I haven't done anything since Thursday, yeah, since Thursday last week. Um, and until I, we know what's happening with local sport, I probably won't be doing much till then either. Yeah, I know it's a it's a tough one for you, isn't it? How many, like how long can you uh, be working from home for without any local sport? <laughs> Almost doesn't make sense, does it? <laughs> no, exactly right. So like I have, if there was local sport on, I could stay at home and do all the work from here. But 
when there's nothing yeah. to cover. Yeah, it doesn't matter yeah. where I am. So it's a bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. And, you know, I'll try and take this time to catch up on a few things because I feel like once the last lockdown ended, everyone dove straight back into work and sort of put a few things aside. So it's good to get time to catch up on those things now. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right, well, let's um, let's talk some positive stuff and let's talk about some some footy and some of the normal things that went on over the weekend. And um, there was some interesting games to say the least. Like there was a lot of absolute stinkers and then there were some decent games. And the one that sticks out for me the most is that, that Essendon win against West Coast over there, which was incredible for, for, for that footy club. It, not many teams can travel to WA and have an easy time. And not that I'm saying Essendon did it easily, but yeah, to go over there and beat West Coast in WA the way they did is so impressive and just just makes you wonder how they've managed to rebuild and then, you know, push into the top eight as quickly as they have and, and what, what the secret is, how they've done it, because a lot of clubs would be envious of that. So good on um, Essendon for being able to do that and they're making me very nervous heading into the dream time this week. Yeah, oh, absolutely you would be. Um and we'll just touch on that as well. That's been moved to Perth. That's been confirmed as uh, um, happening at Optus Stadium, which I think is probably the second best option, isn't it? Um, it's, they've got the, the size for it. And we saw what, how, what they did um, last week with all the, the lights and everything for Indigenous Rand. It was, it was pretty spectacular. Yeah, they can put on a show at Optus Stadium. And I think that was part of the um, the reason they wanted the grand final so badly last year as well. It was just they've got the stadium to really make a showcase of these big games. So it's going to be good to see it put in action this year. And I'm glad they actually put their hand up and said they wanted Dreamtime this year. Last year, they weren't so keen on the grand final <laughs> at certain stages. As you know, they were, said they weren't desperate for it. So it was good to see them uh, yeah, get this one. And if I'm not going to be able to go there, yeah, the second best option for me would be to have it in Perth. Yeah, yeah, I think it'd be great, great for you. Know, I think Optus Stadium is a very similar dimension to the to the MCG, if, or it might be exactly the same. So that can only suit the Tigers, can't it? I mean, you guys can only play at the uh, at the G. <laughs> Certainly, as long as it's bigger than Marvel, we'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it should be it should be a, a cracking game that one. Um, probably the best Dreamtime game um, in a while because you know obviously Essendon haven't been that great over the last few years and Richmond have obviously been at the other end and dominating. So um, it could be one of the closest ones in recent memory. Well, it's shaping up to be the way they handled West coast over there. It's um, yeah, it's, it's in every right it's supposed to be a good game. Richmond have got some players back now. So nearly a full strength team as well. So it's going to be a big clash. And I'll tell you what, the uh, MCG would be spewing. They didn't get to have the game there. Cause can you imagine how packed it would have been if Richmond and SNM were all able to get there? Yeah, exactly right. It's um, yeah, they've missed out on that one big time. Is it Essendon's or whose home game is it? Essendon's home game. So they're going to be losing a lot of money there. Yeah, so it's um, unfortunate, but definitely the second best choice in terms of venue. Um, what about the Brisbane Lions? Are they flag favourites? They've won seven in a row now and belting every team they come up come up against. Yeah, I mean, they have to be, don't they? I mean, them. I still think them, Melbourne and Bulldogs are all pretty close together in terms of who the favourites would be. Um, the Ds sort of dismantled the Dogs, it looked like, on the weekend. But I think Brisbane are just looking too strong at the moment. They're just knocking teams over quite easily and not having much issue with any of them. And if they have a few more games up at Brisbane as well, but the Gabba, I don't see them losing too many more going, um, going into finals. So, yeah, for me, they're... I reckon they have to be now. I know it's changing week by week at this stage, but yeah, I reckon Brisbane are pretty much the flag favourites, I'd say. Yeah, they're just doing a number on, on teams and they absolutely smashed GWS, who have been in, in great form as well. So it's um, it's scary good from them and they just don't have a flaw in their team. I mean, they've got an unbelievable midfield. They've got a power forward. They've got a power defender. So it's scary stuff so that they for me anyway I, I picked him to win to win the flag at the start um i mean i think i had him to finish on top actually i think i had richmond for the flag brisbane to finish on top at the end of the home away season so i think they're every chance to do it and um and they come up against one of the fellow contenders in melbourne this week which is going to be an unbelievable game so it's um all looking good for the lines and how's your boy um mitch robinson kicking four and dominating on the weekend too <laughs> <laughs> wow. It was bloody, it was impressive. It was bloody impressive. I can't knock him for that. It was, uh, he still got it. He shows glimpses. I mean, he doesn't do it every week, but not many players do that sort of performance every week anyway. But yeah, he still shows that he's got glimpses and it puts him, you know, shows uh, why he's in the team. 
And uh, I think if anyone on that team is a barometer, I'd start, he's up there along with Charlie Cameron and not uh, the other idiot with the long hair. So, yeah, and uh, good on Mitch Robinson. He had an absolute blinder on the weekend. Well, Reese Matheson must have played well. Um, if Brisbane won, you obviously expect Reese Matheson to play well then, wouldn't you? In the VFL or the AFL? <laughs> <Jordan's> <laughs> I like it. I like it. But, no, he's the barometer, mate. So, if he's playing well, Brisbane wins. So, obviously, he played well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And every <laughs> other game they've won this year when he was playing in the twos, uh, it was just a fluke. So. <laughs> well, let's move on before you uh, have a stroke. Um, so the, the, we just touched on it before, but the Melbourne Footy Club are obviously one of the flag favourites now and they destroyed the Western Bulldogs on, on Friday night. Um, I mean, on the scoreboard, it probably wasn't as... No, it probably didn't reflect how, how much they dominated that game, but... They 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 killed them all over the park, and it was um it was one of those they really put out a statement. It was a statement performance from from Melbourne, um, especially after losing to Adelaide the week before. And in those circumstances, to come out and beat the Bulldogs on their home deck at Marvel was bloody impressive. Well, I think the Melbourne game was definitely an outlier for the um. So the Adelaide game was definitely an outlier for the for the D's that. Every every team's going to lose a game or two each year. No one. It's rare that anybody will go through undefeated. So obviously you can't look too much into that. But yeah, the way they bounce back, they made the Bulldogs honestly look like a second rate side, as if the Bulldogs mm. hadn't won you know ninety five percent of their games this year. So a lot of confidence, uh, you know, will be put to the Melbourne boys after that sort of a win against a side like that that they can compete with the best because a lot of people were saying. They're only beating easy teams. They're only beating easy teams while, you know, it doesn't get much bigger than the Bulldogs this year. And, yeah, they did it quite easily. And like you said, the scoreboard doesn't reflect uh, how dominating they were. They won by 28, but they easily could have won by 50. So, Yeah, absolutely. And they, what was interesting, I thought, from the game was they they went after Tom Libertoro. So they didn't tag the Bont. They didn't tag Jack McRae. They went after Tom Libertoro, who they thought was their most influential player. And they, it seemed to work because... The Bulldogs struggled with clearances and Tom Lipitoria, I think he averages like nine or 10, or maybe 11 clearances a game. So to to stifle that really um, really stopped the doggies, didn't it? It did. It did. It, um, and like you said, I think it was just so unexpected that probably Lib is probably not used to having a hard tag like that and being shut out of the game the way he is. And he's such a vital player for him. He probably gets doesn't get the rating he deserves with some of the other names that are around him in their midfield, but yeah, obviously a super important player. And when he doesn't play well, it, you know, it shows what happens. Yeah, absolutely. So that's uh, yeah. Huge win for the D's and um, yeah, sets up a great game against the Lions this weekend. So should be good. Um, what wasn't good though, was the Collingwood Geelong game on a Saturday afternoon in front of no one at the MCG, which didn't help, but Geez, if you were at that game, you would have been bloody pissed off with that performance from both teams. The fact that there was no one there was probably, you know, did justice to all the fans because you wouldn't have wanted to be there. It was honestly, I think, one of the worst games in recent memory. And I think it was the first time in a hundred and something years that Collingwood haven't kicked a goal in the first half of footy at the MCG. So it was, it was a disgusting display of footy, even from the Cats. I mean, they won by 10 points, but it, it could have gone either way at that point. Either way, it was such a poor game to watch. I switched off after about half time. I think. Yeah, yeah, it was terrible. Um, I think I only took until the, like the last quarter. Colin, Colin would kick five of their six goals in the last quarter, which was ridiculous. And the scoreboard flatters them big time. Um, to only lose by ten points as well. It, Geelong didn't play that good, but they were clearly better than Collingwood. And um, yeah, for the Pies, only lose by ten points was was very flattering and just summed up how outrageously bad that game was. Yeah, okay. I mean, there's only so many things you can say about it, but <laughs> it, yeah, all in all, it was honestly just a terrible game of football. And it's like, once again, I'm surprised that Collingwood was so quick to resign Nathan Buckley recently because they've got to start asking questions of somebody and I don't know who you go to, but he's been there nearly, what, just over 10 years now, I think. So what's the answer for their problems at the moment? And, and now they've got Brody Grundy and Taylor Adams out for a few weeks each as well, which isn't going to help them at all. Where, where to here from Collingwood? They're second last on the ladder. I, mm. I don't, and I don't see them beating any sides coming up. But what, what, what do you really expect from Collingwood now though? Like it's, they're obviously not going to play finals. So, I mean, having Grundy and Adams out, yeah, it's a big blow, but what are we expecting from them now? Like, is it just to win a few more games, be a bit more competitive, play a better brand? Like, what is it? 
I think it's play a better brand for sure. I mean, they're going to start donning some of the young guys, which they've already done. They've already had a few debutants this year, which is a good thing for Collingwood fans, I think, seeing the young guys come through and get game time. I think they're going to have to keep doing that um, to cover some of these injuries they've got as well. But, yeah, I think just start playing a better style of footy. From what I've seen lately, they're just – they're too slow. They don't want to bring it up forward anytime, quick, anytime soon. They're – they just slow it down way too much. And there's no urgency from what I've seen. Anyway, there's a few times in the first quarter where Dugowie was in the forward line. You could see he was fuming because every time they got it past their halfway point of the ground, they were too slow to get it into the forward 50. And it gives teams time to set up. And that's part of the reason they didn't kick a goal for the first half. So I think a different brand of footy is what they want to see for the rest of the year. And just some improvement. They're obviously not going to play finals. That's out the window now. So just some improvement and, um, you know, doing what you can with some of these young guys while you've got some injuries. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I think, yeah, that's that's the thing with them. It's just a long-term game now with them and just bl- keep blood in these youngsters. I mean, a lot of them have shown a lot of potential. So um, I think they just need to keep doing that. Um, Kane Corns, your man. He's, uh, he's known for his controversial statements and ideas and, and opinions. And he had another one. Well, he had, he had actually had a couple um, over the last couple of days. And it all starts with uh, Jack Rewalt. What did he? What did he have to say about him? <laughs> yeah, well, he's um, he's thrown out there that Richmond should look at doing a Jack Rewalt, what Hawthorne did with um, Sam Mitchell and Luke Hodge, and sort of you know look to trade him out, move him on, maybe bring him to another club that could use an experienced forward for the next year or so, because he's only realistically got. I mean, the way he's playing, maybe another couple of years, but I thought this year or maybe next year would be his last um, with his age. But if he is to play on, then, yeah, he's looking at – he said Richmond should look at moving him on. I don't think that's the way to go. I mean, it didn't really work too well for Hawthorne, did it? They didn't do it too much more after they got rid of those guys. I know Hawthorne were in a different stage as well, but I think you keep on the jack. You don't get rid of a player like that. And I'm pretty sure it came out a couple of weeks ago. He said he was more than happy to take a massive salary cut just to play on another year. Um, and, you know, afford to pay these other guys. So if he's doing stuff like that, you're not going to get rid of a player like Jack. And, yeah, I, I don't I don't see any point to it. Um, I know why he's saying it, because we have some young forwards that, you know, will struggle to get a game with him and Lynch in the side. But he's playing – He's the footy he's playing at the moment, I know it's easy after a good performance on the weekend when he kicked five, but it's – yeah, I, I don't think you get rid of Jack very well. Nah, not at all. He's a heart and soul player at the club and um... – done so much for Richmond and he, he was there during your, your lean years as well. And he was probably your best player during those periods. So um, no, nah, I think it's an outrageous call from Kane. And, um, but you just touched on his, um, on his performance on the weekend. How good was that Mark? Oh, unbelievable. I hate the first thing that people did though, was automatically try and compare it to Nick Rewatts because they both ran back with the flight. Just no. appreciate it for what it is. Yeah. I mean, I think for the spectacle, for the spectacle of the mark itself, I think Nick's looked better, looked more appealing, just the way he flew back with it at pace and all the rest of it. But in terms of courage, they both weren't looking at the – they both, you know, were looking at the footy running backwards with the flight. Equally as courageous, I think, anyway. But I don't know why, yeah, everyone went straight to the comparisons. Just appreciate that because that's arguably mark of the year up there mm. with Shea Bolton's mark. So two contenders at the moment. But I said this online. I said, watch um, an uncontested chess mark on the wing – get mark of the year because another fan base votes puts more votes in for it with our flawed system for mark and goal of the year that we've got at the moment so i'm jumping online this this week and i'm sure definitely voting because i didn't vote for shea bolton's mark i just thought it was a given it'd be mark of the week but there you go yeah yeah um, they need they need to change that for sure uh, like if have that has that has that been voted yet this week in terms of what three uh, lots one not that i'm no, not, not yet not that i'm aware of no no, so if, it if, if it comes out and Rewatt doesn't win it, <laughs> geez, it'd be an absolute war from the Richmond fans. Oh, it has to be though. Like you can't, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You can't not reward that for Mark of the Week. It was arguably, you know, Mark of the Year in previous years gone by, it would have won it. So yeah, you get to give it Mark of the Week at least. Yeah, definitely. And even like Shay Bolton's one, that was, people at the time were saying that's one of the best marks um, of recent time. Um, and then not to, to not get given the mark of the week was ridiculous. So I think Jack's definitely and um, more just for the courageous aspect of it in, in, instead of the, um, you know, the high flying over the shoulders type mark, this was just a courageous act um, back and back with the flight of the ball. So um, yeah, he has to win it in my opinion anyway. 
Well, in saying that, he did, he still did get some height and get on top of a few yeah. guys as well. So he ran back and he still took a hanger somehow. He, I think he just got on the back of um, Jason Castagna there and he got a bit of a ride. So he ended up getting up pretty high as well. So, yeah, I think you got both aspects, courage and height. It surely has to take it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And we'll just touch on that. What do you think of Richmond's performance against the Crows as well? It was a bit up and down that match. Yeah, it was a little bit up and down. Adelaide definitely had us in the first quarter. They were all over us. And I was thinking, oh, geez, here we go again. Adelaide are going to pull one out of their ass again like they did against the Ds the week before. I thought, oh, no. But um, no, we turned it around. I thought we played pretty well the rest of the game. We went in the three-quarter time, I think, 33 points up. And that's when I really wanted to see us bury them. I thought you're up at that, you have that kind of a lead, put the foot down and just, you know, run away with the game. And that's as a Richmond supporter, especially with how we've played recently, we really wanted to see that, build some percentage. Adelaide clawed the game back and they came to within two goals, I think it was. And then, you know, Rewald kicks three in the last quarter and we win by 28 in the end. So still happy with the win. I'm not going to complain to take those wins any day of the week, but I would have liked to have seen them put the foot down a little bit more, but I don't know, you'll take it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Adelaide have shown that they're they're no slouches this year and compared to last year. They've come a long way in in twelve months. So, um, and the way you guys have been performing lately, you you sort of just take those wins, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a win's a win, and we need every win we can get at the moment if we want to seriously contend in finals this year because we're going to need to finish high up on the ladder. So, yeah, we'll we'll take the wins when they come. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the performance. We had Coleman Jones, you know, play second game of AFL, kick four goals. One was from the boundary line, so he's promising. Um, hopefully, he continues that form, and you know, makes it difficult for Lynch to get back in the side possibly if he plays well. So, who knows? Um, there's some exciting signs. I'm, I'm happy with what I've seen. We still got a couple of key players missing as well. So once they come in, it's uh hopefully all up from here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, well, let's uh, let's move on to round 12. Um, the first round of the buys as well. So there's, I think, about six teams with a buy this weekend. And um, so shortened, shortened weekend. So the buys probably come at a good time, don't they, in terms of what's going on at the moment um, with COVID-19. So um, be interesting to see how the AFL works around that. But... Um, but yeah, as we said before, it all starts on Friday night between Melbourne and Brisbane. Um, it's scheduled for for Darwin or oh, it's Darwin, Alice Springs. I think it's Alice Springs actually. Um, so yeah, we'll say Northern Territory. I don't know. It's some somewhere up there. So, um, but that's more than likely to be changed to a neutral venue. I'd say. I think so, because I'm pretty sure they were talking about potentially doing Dreamtime up there as well. And they were saying there's um, issues with the uh, Northern Territory and border issues and whatnot with COVID now. So I'm not sure if that applies um, still to Mel- at the moment. So we'll see if that changes. But yeah, I think it probably will move to a neutral venue. But we'll wait and see. I w- I'd like to see it up there, especially for so Doug Nichols around again. It'd be good. Yeah, absolutely. It would make a lot, a lot of sense um, to keep it up there. But um, but yeah, it is what it is, but really looking forward to this one and seeing how Brisbane do perform away from the Gabba as well and whether they can um, translate that dominance that they have at home uh, to a, an away ground and, and against a, another great team in Melbourne. Absolutely. I loved, I wouldn't, I don't want to see them do what Port Adelaide and West Coast do. And as soon as they travel, they, they struggle. I want to see them put up a, a good fight. And if it's in a neutral venue as well, then both sides is disadvantage in that sense. So I think it'll be a good battle either way, but I'm leaning towards Brisbane at the moment, just from the form that they're in, but then Melbourne's midfield on the other hand is dominating as well. And if they can shut a couple of key players out and I think Lockie Neal is still out as well, if I'm not mistaken, yep. or did he come back? No, um, he's, still he's still out. He's still out. So I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go Brisbane, but I think only just. Yep, I'm going to go. I'm going to go Melbourne only just as well. I think it's going to be a real tight game and two heavyweights going at it. So I think the D's just, just especially coming off their win against the Dogs, is going to really. Um, and I think that that loss, as we said before, that loss against Adelaide was um, a good wake up call from them, and I think they won't won't turn back from there. So I think they'll get up just, which is going to be a ripping contest no matter what. Um, Saturday afternoon, we've got St Kilda in Sydney. Um, this is scheduled for Marvel, but who knows? Who knows where this could be played? I don't. It won't be Marvel, surely not. Um, I don't know because Sydney would have to travel back into Melbourne, and then how would they go getting back out? So it's yeah. all logistical stuff that what you and I thankfully don't have to worry about. But I think it'd be moved. But either way, I think it might be a bit of a lackluster game from what St Kilda have been showing lately. The Swans seem pretty good at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I think Sydney are. Uh, 
Sydney will be too good there. I don't think it really matters where that game's played. Although there was talk about it just um, being swapped over to, to Sydney's home game and then the Saints play them at Marvel later in the year. But um, who knows? Who knows? But yeah, I think Sydney win that regardless. Um, later that day, we've got Adelaide and Collingwood at the Adelaide Oval. Um, geez, I think it could be a nice, easy one there for the Crows. You'd, you'd think, given Collingwood's form. Well, that's it. You know, yeah, with the way Collingwood have played, you can't see them beating Adelaide, especially with the form Adelaide's been in. But who knows? Footy's a, footy's a weird sport. But yeah, no, for me, I'm going the Crom all day, especially at their home ground. I don't see uh, Collingwood getting the job done over there. Yeah, and especially with Collingwood's outs as well. I like just yeah, can't see them getting close to the Crows. Um, the Dreamtime game also on that night, as we spoke about before, it's going to be a great contest of Essendon in really good form and Richmond being Richmond. It's going to be a, a great game up at Optus Stadium. And, geez, can you – I think I, I, there's going to be some brave people out there that do tip, tip Essendon. And I don't know. I just – it's it's going to be a really really tough contest, just given how Richmond have yeah been pretty up and down so far. So it could be anyone's game this one. Absolutely, I, I wouldn't blame anybody for tipping the Bombers this week. To be honest with you, I mean I'm not personally. I'm still going the Tigers, but I, I don't blame anybody. Momentum is a beautiful thing in footy, and they're flying at the moment, especially with a win in WA at the same ground. They're comfortable there now. Um, they're relaxed, so they don't have to travel anywhere, which is good for them. So they're every chance to win this one. I'm going to go Richmond just purely for experience. We get Shane Edwards back into the side, who is a massive, massive in for us. Um, Koch and Impressed here have now had another game under their belt coming back from injury from last week. So I've got some confidence going forward, but I, I think it'll be an absolute ripping clash. And like you mentioned earlier in the podcast, I think it's going to be probably the closest one we've had in recent memory. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think it's going to be a great game. And um, if Essendon can continue on what they've been showing the last... Oh, month or six weeks, I've been been really good, and um, I think I think they're every chance to win it. I'm not going to tip them because I just think Richmond are just are just too good, and um, we'll always find a way to win these sort of big games. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me if Essendon got super close. But I think the Tigers just, which yeah. I'm sure you'd be happy about. You can't you can't stand losing to Essendon, can you? No, well, I can't stand losing to any of the big four clubs, to be honest. So it's uh, and we haven't we haven't in a little while. So I wouldn't I don't want to see that streak get broken now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Sunday afternoon, we've got Carlton and West Coast at the SCG. This one's been moved to from the MCG to the SCG, and uh, I haven't spoken about the Blues on this podcast yet. Um, You've been quiet about them. I was going to bring them up, but I thought, is it still touchy? Yeah, I was. I was as upset as I've been in a long time um, after our loss to Sydney on the weekend. That was really bad and just very, very numbing feeling. And it was was just the same stuff with Carlton that I've been speaking about every week on this podcast is those lapses and letting teams just dominate them and playing three quarters and just going to sleep in the last. So it's, it's disappointing. It, it hurts and... Um, yeah, that wasn't a good good twenty four hours after that loss. That's for sure. It was um, it was really tough to get over actually, and really had to reconsider why I'm why I care so much and how I can not care so much. So I don't think it's healthy being a Carlton supporter or a supporter of any AFL team, especially if they're pretty shit like Carlton are. AFL does things to people that it's hard to explain. It can uh, it can really honestly it really does affect your day to day life outside of football. So. I was scared to do this podcast a couple of days after with some of the fiery messages that I was seeing you you sending. I thought, oh, geez, this could be uh, this could be heated. <laughs> but um, I think the, the amount of times that you can say, I don't care anymore, I'm over it. it. The next week comes around, the team runs out, and you're just as invested as you were the week before, ready to go again. So it's a weird thing, footy. But um, yeah, I can understand the disappointment and frustration having been through it myself. Um, you know, at times, so I get it, I get it. But you know, there's Always an up. I'm looking at the you know the sports bet odds at the moment, and you guys are heading into this game against West Coast favourites at mm. this stage. Are you surprised sure by how? that? Yeah, I am a little bit. I mean, West Coast to West Coast, but probably playing them away from home helps, and um, playing them on a on a tight ground like the SCG, um, it might suit us a bit. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. West Coast do have a lot of outs too. So it, it yeah. I mean, 
I thought our season was done after losing to Sydney. Um, and I mean, if we lose this, it's, it's now in the coffin stuff. So um, yeah, I mean, there's, we just simply have to win, but I, I'm just not brave enough to tip us after what I've seen the last few weeks, even that our win against Hawthorne just wasn't impressive. And I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm, I think I'm going to tip West coast in a tight one. Hopefully that does favours for your blue baggers, but I'm I'm going to go Carlton for this one. Um, I think you guys don't have to travel. You're up in Sydney now. You're staying up there. West Coast are terrible away from home, and like you said, they got a few injuries that are pretty key. So I'm I'm thinking you guys will get the job done, but the look on your face says maybe I'm making the wrong decision. I don't know, but I'm, I'm going to tip the baggers in this week. I just uh, on what basis do you uh, do you think we're going to win? From what have you seen that you think we're going to beat West Coast? I just it's, – it's more what I've seen West Coast away from home that makes me think you guys are going to win. Mm. And I, the, the the quarters of footy that you guys play when, you, when you're when you on, you're absolutely on. It's more just – I think the biggest issue at Carlton at the moment, and to correct me if you think I'm wrong, but is that it's not a four-quarter effort or it's – um or even if it's a four-quarter effort, it's the last five, ten minutes of quarters that you guys slip off a little bit and teams sort of get a couple goals on the board. So I think those are the things that hurt you, but – I, whenever I watch West Coast play away from WA, um, and especially with these injuries, I just I don't see much. And I think you guys at the moment be wanting to bounce back. And I saw it last year a couple of times when it was sort of ride or die, and you guys managed to get over the line and you know just keep the flame, the flame of your season alight. Um, and I reckon you would just do that again this week. But yeah, like you said, it, who knows? Honestly, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Who knows? But yeah, it's it's a huge opportunity to to beat them this week and. I fully expect us to have that attitude and, and it wouldn't surprise me if we did get up, but it's just like, you think you say this every week, like it's like, okay, surely they've learned their lessons and it's going to be different next week and they'll, they'll work on their deficiencies, but it just, it's, it's honestly the same, the same stuff every week, the exact same issues. So I don't know. It's just, it's hard to, hard to get a read on, but um, yeah, it's really, it's a toss of a coin that game anyway, but I think I've said enough about the Blues now and before I start getting angry again, um, I might move on from it. Uh, uh, Save it uh, for everybody listening. Yes, exactly. Uh, the final game of the round is Frio and the Bulldogs um, at Opta Stadium. So that is going to stay at that ground, I believe. So I think the Bulldogs already flown out and and uh, preparing to play in Perth. And It's a tough game because Frio, another, another team that are shocking away from home, but very good at home. So it's going to be a good contest. Absolutely. I mean, I'm going to go the Bulldogs purely because of the season they've had. And it's just hard to tip against the Bulldogs at the moment. And especially after a loss, I'll be fine and ready to bounce back. But Freo, every chance with the way that they play up at Optus and some of the young players have got and the talent that they do have up there. Um, I think they're only a couple of years away from playing finals again. So who knows? I'm going the Dogs just because, like I said, everything I mentioned earlier. So for me, the Western Bulldogs, but... It's anybody's game. Yeah, it is hard to tip against the doggies, um, especially yeah with the season that they've had. But um, would not surprise me if Freya got up and um, in front of their home fans. So interesting to see how that game plays out. And that is all the games for this for this round. Obviously, yeah, as we said before, it's a shorter round with the buys and Gold Coast, North Melbourne, Port Adelaide, Hawthorne, Geelong, and GWS all have the buys. Um, so. Gonna be another interesting round of footy, and who knows? I mean, anything, anything could happen between now and then as well. There might be fixture changes, venue changes, and and everything. So, what I, well, a positive that I can sort of take out from being in a lockdown and COVID running rampant again is a potential of a footy frenzy coming back, where we had footy on almost, well, it was every night of the week, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. There was a period there where I think it was for it was a two two and a half weeks straight. There was a footy every yeah. night, yeah. which when there's nothing to do when you're sitting at home, it was it was beautiful. We had all you know, you had all the time in the world to watch the footy. You saw every game. It was it was a footy paradise for a couple of weeks. And maybe not so much for the players that were doing four or five day turnarounds, but for us at home, it was uh, it was pretty good. So, look. As much as I'd love to see that again, I also hope the COVID situation doesn't get that yeah. bad to the point where we have to go through that again. But if we do, I guess that'd be one of the upsides is that we do get the footy frenzy. Yeah, I mean, they'd have to do it if, if yeah, if the lockdown 
lasted any longer than a month or or so. So it, yeah, it would be great. It, it was pretty much the only thing that really got us through it last year. So um, yeah, well, that's if that's if that happens, that'd be great. But yeah, let's let's hope it's uh it's all over in a, in a couple of weeks' time. Um, all right, well, that is us. That is us done for this episode. We're back on Zoom, a bit different. Um, vibes are obviously different to how they've been for the first 11 weeks of the year, but um, it is what it is and it's the times we're living in and we just have to adapt. Um, but we should thank our sponsors, shouldn't we? Absolutely, we should. We can't forget our sponsors. So we'll start off with, as per usual, Million Ma, so beautifully... Australian curated gift boxes. So if you're looking for a present, especially for somebody in lockdown at the moment, it's a great gift to go to. So look at that. Look up them, uh, Millie and Ma. And who else we got, and, Marcus? And we've got Retro Jet Prince Go Ends. Woo! <laughs> that was a bit of a delayed one, that one, compared to usual. So probably not as funny when it's delayed. Um, but uh, did you want to plug what you're doing for June as well? I do actually, yes. Yeah. So that's a really good, really good point you bring up there. So at the moment, I'm doing the Push Up Challenge, which is a charity that goes towards mental health. And between the first and the 25th of June, I have to reach a target of 3,318 push ups, I believe it is, which sadly is the um, is the number of suicides in Australia in 2019. So obviously, looking to reduce that number significantly and. Every day I got to do a different number of push-ups. I got to reach a target, um, and it all goes towards charity. So I'm doing that. If you'd like to donate, I will leave a link in the bio um, on all the socials, I guess. So that's there to go and donate, and it goes towards charity. My charity I've chosen is Headspace. So mental health is obviously really important at the moment, and it's it's got a bigger light shone on it than ever before in the past. But I think we still got a lot of room to grow, and you know we can do better in that space. So that's what we're trying to do, and try and grow that. So yeah, if you'd if you can donate and you're financially able to, I'd really appreciate it. You know, every dollar counts. So yeah, donate, donate to there. I oh, love it, mate. Love it. That's uh, it's a great cause and it's a great thing you're doing. I'll, I'll certainly be donating um, to that. And yeah, I encourage everyone to, to get around it. It's a, it's a great thing. And um, yeah, definitely uh, would love to see the, that mental health space um, continue to be looked at and improved on as well. So all good things, there um but that that is us done um as i say every week make sure you leave us a review subscribe to us on itunes youtube spotify wherever you listen to your podcasts and um yeah and we'll uh hopefully be in person next week but looks unlikely but most likely be back on zoom and um doing it all again that's it we'll uh, wait and see what the uh well, the next week brings, but hopefully we can be back in person. Although, like you said, probably unlikely at this stage, but the Zoom works. We still get to, you know, do what we love. And I guess you get to look at the positives and this is one of them. We still get to do what we still get to do what we love. So we'll keep doing it as we, as long as we can. No worries at all. Um, all right. Well, enjoy round 12 and stay safe if you're in Melbourne. And um, yeah, hopefully this is all over pretty soon. Yeah.